Hey friends, if someone has been careless or reckless with your feelings, or has been unwilling to communicate with you about how they feel, or where you stand with them, or they are sending you lots of mixed messages but you are still trying to pursue some kind of relationship with them, this priority message is for you. The word maybe is just a word, but it can feel like an enigma sometimes. It isn't a yes, it isn't a no, it kind of leaves us hanging. People like to say that it's not an answer, and that's kind of true. I mean, for some things, it can be a viable temporary answer, such as, maybe I'll come over today and help you with that project, or maybe I'll come to your birthday party Saturday, is a perfectly acceptable answer if you're not sure of a schedule or a timeline. Maybe I'll buy this new coffee table is an acceptable answer if you're thinking about redecorating. Maybe I'll order steak or maybe I'll order chicken is an acceptable answer at a restaurant. But when it comes to things that are more concrete and not temporary, such as interpersonal relationships of any kind, maybe is not really acceptable. That goes for the word maybe and the feeling. Yes, the word maybe does kind of have a feeling attached to it when it's dropped in a conversation. To the people using the term, the primary feeling is usually having less pressure to give an actual answer. Sometimes it can be useful in avoiding guilt or having to let someone down or tell them the truth, at least for a little while. To the person who's hearing the term, the primary feeling can be uncomfortable because the answer is unknown. The unknown can bring fear, sadness, anxiety. Hell, even people who aren't normally anxious by nature can become very anxious when the only things they're getting from someone who's important to them are maybes and feel vague and ambiguous. It's funny, and I don't mean funny haha, how even when you are a pretty confident person, some people can just bring out confidence eroding things in you. Like, no matter how long or how well you think you know them, you feel like they have one foot out the door in your relationship with them. You are constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop. This secondhand stress, I guess you can call it, is weird. But even though it seems like it comes from nowhere. It really doesn't. I like to think of people sometimes as being sort of like a mirror. When you're looking in that mirror, you see a reflection, right? Sometimes it's a reflection of mutual admiration or respect, humility, vulnerability, love, or something else positive. Sometimes the reflection you're seeing, though, is not positive. It's insecurity, unhealed trauma, selfishness, what have you. Some, most people don't love their own negative qualities, to say the least, but they are still there nonetheless in that mirror. And when you are looking at them, it projects onto you. It can bring that out in you. And one of the biggest ones it can bring out is doubt. Doubt in them can very easily transfer into doubt within you. Look, let's be honest, nobody enjoys not knowing what they really mean to someone or where they, where they really stand with them. Nobody enjoys just treading water wondering if you should dive deeper into a situation or just get in the nearest boat and leave before you drown. It's a difficult situation to be in and there's not, a, there's not set advice that can be really given about how to deal with it. Not that it matters, really, because at the end of the day, literally everyone in your life can tell you to walk away from something or someone, but you most likely won't until you're ready. There are always going to be a variety of reasons for this, but one typical one is that, as humans, we tend to want to give people that we care about the benefit of the doubt. We want to see the best in them, even when that's not what they're showing us even when they are doing or saying things that feel dismissive of what you think you are to them. Sometimes this leads us to chase people who are seemingly emotionally unavailable or not on the same level of vulnerability and openness that you are. Most often, or more often than not, 
This happens because somewhere along your own journey, you were made to feel like you aren't worthy of real, healthy connections and love, like you are too much or too difficult or whatever. So that leads you to think that this person's distance or recklessness with your feelings is okay. That constantly feeling unsure about where you stand is normal and not a big deal. It's just part of being in a relationship and so on. With all due respect, that last part about this being normal is wrong, dead wrong. And it's this wrong-headed thinking that gets you involved in situations where you feel that constant state of anxiety and then it keeps you there. Look, nobody wants to think that they are a terrible judge of character or that they would purposely get themselves into a situation where they aren't being treated well. So instead, you, well, kind of lie to yourself. You <laughs> tell yourself that this person loves you and sometimes you imagine love where it does not actually exist, or you vastly overestimate its level. You don't want to admit that you might be in a loveless relationship because deep down you are scared that it's your own fault that you're here. Friends, I am here to tell you that it's not your fault. We're going to reframe this thinking. Listen, when people make you feel like you're hard to love, it is almost never actually about you. Remember that mirror example, that hard to love feeling is a reflection. It is a reflection of their own lack of self-love. It's their lack of feeling their own emotions, especially the difficult ones that left a scar that they didn't heal from. It is an unwillingness to give good things like love to themselves. And if they won't give those things to themselves, they're certainly not going to give it to you. When you think about this in this form, it can make their behavior a little easier to understand. Someone acting hot and cold, stringing you along, invalidating your needs, disregarding your feelings, it doesn't have anything to do with how lovable you are. It's a sign that they are deeply wounded. They are the ones who aren't allowing themselves to heal from those wounds so that they can form actual healthy connections with you or anyone for that matter. There is something very important that needs to be said at this point about all of this, by the way. It is okay to be wounded. It is okay to have trauma and pain and scars. It is not okay to use those things to hurt others, even if it's indirectly. It's never okay to play around with someone else's feelings because you aren't sure of yours. It is never okay to be careless or reckless with them either. It is never okay to break someone else's heart because someone broke yours in the past. Period. Full stop. So often when you are in a relationship with someone like this, you might get tricked into believing that if you were just less of this or that, if you didn't want so much, if you would just be fine with someone giving you the bare minimum or less, or giving you less than you want or need, then you'd be easier, and that person would be able to do a better job at loving you. You start to see their avoidance, negligence, and uncertainty as the result of you being unlovable. And, of course, you think that's your fault, too. If you just had fewer needs or were more agreeable, they'd be more available to you. This is all wrong too. Their ability to love you correctly has, once again, nothing to do with you at all. It is a them problem, not a you problem. It's an advertisement of their emotional wounds, of their trauma, of the, thi of the fact that they are not healed from those things. And that's okay. People heal at their own pace and they do it when and if they want to. There are some people who will argue this point and say that the reasons they cannot form healthy attachments is not about lack of healing or the things that happened in the past and perhaps for a very select few that's the case. But with a vast, vast majority of people, it's avoidance, not just of connections, 
with other people, but avoidance of the truth, too. Almost every damn time you hear someone talk about a dysfunctional relationship with another person where they use terms that signify avoidance, like walls, closed off, emotionally unavailable, inability to love, numbness, lack of vulnerability, etc., and so on. It can be directly traced back to some event in their past that made them this way. But hey, don't argue with me. Argue with psychologists and other mental health professionals who will overwhelmingly tell you that unless someone is born with a form of psychosis, people are not born emotionally stunted. Psychosis has been determined to come mostly from environmental factors, with some people developing it due to a combination of both those factors and genetic predisposition, by the way. But let's not get all in the weeds here. We will perhaps save that for our upcoming podcast. To put the point simply, people need other people. Forming authentic, loving deep connections with said people is a normal part of human existence. Human connection is powerful, it's important, and it's essential to your well-being. And look, I get it. Sometimes people are, well, awful. Sometimes you put your trust into someone who later proves to you that they didn't deserve any of that trust. Sometimes you think you know someone and it turns out you were dead wrong. Believe me, I have experienced this firsthand too. But does that mean we put our hearts and souls into a locked vault, never to be opened again, never trusting again? Should we all just sentence ourselves to being forever alone or whatever the kids are saying these days? Of course not. There's nothing wrong with being selected, selective or being guarded or being cautious. There's nothing wrong with making sure someone is emotionally safe before really allowing yourself to be vulnerable. But friends, there's a lot wrong with people who put you through unnecessary pain and grief by playing emotional games and making you wonder who you are to them or stringing you along or making you a placeholder or saving you for later or wanting to be only in a situationship with you, or whatever you want to call it. People who do this are, to put simply, emotionally unsafe. Not to mention, they're draining and frustrating. And before you know it, being in this kind of relationship will erode your confidence and make you question, well, a lot, including yourself. There's no honor in this struggle. And there's almost never a payoff. That's real talk. But how do you know that someone is emotionally safe? Emotionally safe and secure people are kind and respectful of everyone's feelings, regardless of what kind of interest they have in that person. They're open. They're honest. They're self-aware. They know what their flaws are and they do not play emotional games with people, even by accident. So, if they aren't actually interested in you, they will probably tell you, instead of stringing you along or making you a maybe or making you constantly question what you mean to them. They will not selfishly get involved with you to benefit their ego or the ever popular to get over someone else or just simply to have someone for the sake of having someone. Emotionally safe people are not afraid to be alone when that is necessary. They are not afraid to give their problems and issues a name and work on them. So they can be better all the way around, not just for a future relationship, but for themselves too. Look, I don't know how to say this without just actually saying it, but people who drag others into their emotional dysfunctions that they are very well aware they have, knowing they cannot be good partners knowing that they can only give you a maybe and not a yes, are just selfish jerks. Sorry, not sorry. Heal before you deal. Enough said. And look, someone doesn't have to be sure about you or want a relationship with you to be kind to you and respectful of your feelings. In fact, if someone is interested in you and they aren't sure about it, that's okay. 
there is a huge difference between simply trying to figure things out and being manipulative, doing push-pull contradictory things. And that difference is clarity, respectful and open communication, and just being, once again, kind and considerately aware that the other person has feelings too. You can definitely let people down easy and with kindness and respect if that's what you want to do. But you don't do that with mixed signals. You don't do it with maybe. That might be easy for you, but it isn't kind or respectful to them. Relationships aren't actually complicated, but people are. And that's where you get into a sticky wicket. You obviously cannot control what other people do. But you can control what you do, or rather what you don't do. And one of those things is not ever use someone else's emotional dysfunctions or inconsistencies as a measuring stick for your own worth. You are not a maybe, friends. Do not let someone put you on a shelf like that. If someone is treating you like that, like a maybe, like one out of several choices, like an option, then, well, I won't tell you what to do, but I'll tell you what your best option is to move on to someone who is emotionally safe and it shows to someone who chooses you and continues to choose you every day to someone who knows that to them you are always not just a yes but a hell yes they're out there trust me so be patient hold out for what you want what you need and what you deserve it's worth it you're worth it that's all I've got for you this week. I'll be back next week with another priority message. Until then, take good care of yourselves. Bye.